Um, good morning. I'm going to speak in English. Um, Kaposi sarcoma, or KS, is one of the most common HIV-related malignancies, uh, and it's particularly prevalent in some parts of southern Africa. It's, it's actually linked to a herpes virus and is a cancer of the wall vessels. Uh, in the era of AIDS, it's become a major problem in sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, for example, in Mozambique, it's the second leading cause of cancer, behind only cervical cancer, and it's the leading cause of cancer in males. Uh, it has a variety of clinical forms, and most commonly seen are dermatologic presentations, but the lesions can take many different forms. But they're usually numerous and, and can be quite painful and can lead to significant dense swelling of the limbs. And KS lesions are, are clearly visible to others, so the disease can be quite stigmatizing. But the lesions can occur in blood vessels anywhere in the body. So if they're present in, for example, the gastrointestinal tract or the lungs, uh, hemorrhage can lead to rapid death. My slide is not advancing, I'm sorry. There we go. The basis of AIDS-associated Kaposi treatment is antiretroviral therapy. Now, in the early stages of disease, ARVs alone can be enough to control and even reverse the Kaposis. But once the KS is advanced, systemic chemotherapy is needed. Regarding chemotherapy, a great divide exists. In sub-Saharan Africa, as Clara said, access to any chemotherapy for any cancer is, is extremely limited. And even in places where chemotherapy is available, standard care for KS in most countries is a poorly tolerated three-drug combination, um, abbreviated ABV, uh, which is associated with bone marrow suppression and severe peripheral neuropathies. And at high cumulative doses, conventional doxorubicin is also associated with the development of cardiomyopathies. In rich countries, though, for many years, the standard of care has been monotherapy with pegylated liposomal doxorubicin, or PLD. This more modern formulation of doxorubicin provides longer serum availability of the drug. Basically, effective concentrations stay higher for a longer time, which allows it to be used in monotherapy, meaning fewer side effects and fewer total doses received. In the global north, paclitaxel is often also used as a second-line monotherapy, but it too is associated with bone marrow suppression and, and hair loss. But PLD and paclitaxel are both very expensive and not widely available in developing countries. In Maputo, Mozambique, MSF has offered specialty HIV and tuberculosis care, including treatment with second and third line HIV drugs and care for patients with MDR and XDR-TB. In the Centro de Referencia de Alto Mai, or the CRAM, over 2,000 KS patients have been treated since 2010 making it one of the largest KS cohorts in the world. While the quality of care is high, outcomes are unfortunately so-so. Uh, historically, only 40% of patients achieved complete or partial remission, and those who did needed, needed many cycles of the ABV therapy. Loss to follow-up was high, and it's expected that many of the patients who were lost to follow-up actually died. This is therefore an ideal setting to pilot the use of PLD. MSF procured a supply for use in Mozambique, and we put in place an observational study to document its use, the first widespread use in sub-Saharan Africa. We hoped that documenting this experience would lead to improvements in the price and availability of the drug, and eventually a change in national protocols. Chemotherapy-naive patients were eligible to receive PLD. Women of childbearing age agreed to contraception prior to receiving any cytotoxic medication, and PLD was given every three weeks until complete remission or partial remission with improvement, significant improvement in pain and edema. Prior to any PLD infusion, same-day chemistries and blood counts were performed. PLD was held for hemoglobins below 8, and patients were transfused post-PLD for hemoglobins between 8 and 10 grams per deciliter. PLD was also withheld for an absolute neutrophil count below 1,000 and for severe transaminitis and increased creatinine. Now, to a European oncologist, this setup sounds pretty normal, uh, but I would just like to underscore the effort that it took uh, to have the laboratory capacity to provide these test results in real time, and also the close collaboration that we developed with our friends at the blood bank at the Central Hospital in Maputo. In addition to chemotherapy visits and their routine HIV care, 
participants had a total of six scheduled study-specific visits over the course of two years and benefited from routine psychosocial counseling and evaluations. A total of 183 patients were screened between March 1st and December 31st, uh, 2016, of whom 124 were eligible for the study. Of the 124 eligible, 116 were enrolled and then followed for two years. A majority of participants were men, and the overall cohort was not that young. 83% of patients were aged over 30. At the time of enrollment, patients had varying degrees of immunocompromise, but nearly half had a CD4 under 200, and a quarter of those had a CD4 below 73. Half had been diagnosed with HIV for the first time in the previous six months, and the vast majority were on efavirenz-based antiretroviral therapy. Current or past TB was quite common, and without getting into the specifics of KS staging, about one quarter of our patients had the most advanced stage of KS disease, T1S1. When considering all-cause mortality at 24 months, 20% 20 of patients of participants had died, and a further 13% had been lost in follow-up. The Kaplan-Meier plot on the left shows that participants with a CD4 below 100 at baseline had lower survival, and that almost all of those died within a year. Uh, the plot on the right shows that participants with more advanced disease at baseline, that T1S1 that I referred to, also had lower survival. In terms of disease progression, 80% of participants achieved complete or partial remission at any point during the follow-up. And as a reminder, that figure was 40% in the historical cohort at the same center. And they needed a relatively small number of cycles of chemotherapy compared to historic standards. Uh, historically, it was over 10 cycles per patient. Uh, here, uh, it was after a median of six cycles. But 28% of those who did achieve complete or partial remission eventually needed to restart chemotherapy uh, because of disease progression. Now, this likely doesn't reflect the effectiveness of PLD, um, but rather the advanced disease that was present in so many participants at presentation. And overall, half of participants had progressions for free survival at study exit. Now, to our knowledge, these are the first reported data on quality of life after treatment for KS in Sub-Saharan Africa. And without getting into too many details, the SF12 is a cross-culturally validated proprietary scale. And its two main parts are the physical component and the mental component. Respondents' answers to the questions are translated into a qualitative score for each of these two components. And the most important result is seen in the figure on the left. Within the first six months of study enrollment, the physical aspects of participants' quality of life had greatly improved compared to the general population. The 23 deaths among study participants were all fully investigated, and, and most were very difficult to attribute to a single cause, because advanced HIV, opportunistic infections, and social problems, such as unstable housing, and unstable food, and, and drug use, are really difficult to tease out from each other. Uh, and details of these deaths are described in the, fully described in the manuscript cited below. 28% uh, of patients had at least one adverse event, and was as expected, most were hematologic in nature. And we also noted two cases of the hand-foot syndrome, which is a painful and sometimes disquamative erythema of the palms and the soles associated with doxorubicin. This study has its limitations, including its single-site observational design, uh, which limit its comparability to other studies. Also, only 37% of patients were able to have biopsies uh, confirming their diagnosis. And importantly, uh, HIV viral load data was incomplete, as the study took place at a time when viral load testing was less widely available. And this would have been really helpful to understand the mechanisms behind uh, the sort of relapse of, of POSI patients. But overall, PLD was safe and effective for the treatment of POSI sarcoma in Mozambique. Good results were seen after fewer doses of chemotherapy, which led to a favorable side effect profile and marked improvement in patients' quality of life. Nonetheless, a quarter of patients, nearly a quarter of patients, uh, died during follow-up, and most of those died within a year. This is a clear signal that there is still work to be done with the timely detection of HIV and Kaposi, 
as well as the need to refer suspected Kaposi cases immediately. By the time they arrived, frankly, many of our participants were quite ill and had been so for quite a long time. Uh, this whole project was carried out in close collaboration with the Mozambican Ministry of Health and as a result has led to change in national treatment guidelines. And PLD now appears on global front procurement lists, which is a hugely positive step. The global supplies of the drug are extremely limited. And even then, the price is still very high, so true access remains problematic. The recent multicentric trial in Southern Africa showed that paclitaxel, often considered as a second line treatment in Global North, was safe and effective for KS, and plans are underway to directly compare it, uh, paclitaxel, to PLD in Sub-Saharan Africa. But any results of that study are many, many years away. But I personally don't believe that there's any excuse to wait to act. We know that both PLD and paclitaxel are superior to the current regimens in most countries, and the supply of both is sorely limited. The infrastructure necessary is lacking in large swaths of sub-Saharan Africa, particularly the rural areas. So we should be doing what we can, where we can, with what we can. And to that end, MSF has successfully introduced PLD in other settings where KS is common, including in Kenya and the DRC. This study was only one part of what has been a decade-long effort to improve care for Kaposi sarcoma in Mozambique and goes hand-in-hand -hand with so many efforts to provide training to medical staff, improve infrastructure, deal with very difficult supply chain problems, political considerations, and access issues. So my thanks to the dozens of people without whom these results would not have been possible, and especially to the study participants for giving their time over the course of two years of follow-up. Thank you for your attention.